GPT is now a very well known language model. It is based on the modified version of the transformer as published in this paper, attention is all you need. GPT has two stages, namely unsupervised pre-training and supervised training. Let's look at the two stages and the model architecture of GPT in this video. Let's also look at the results of task transfer on different tasks like language inference, semantic similarity and question answering. Whereas the transformers used an encoder and the decoder architecture, the GPT uses a modified version of it which is just the decoder. In addition, there is a LM head during the first pre-training stage and there is also a classification head for supervised fine-tuning based on the chosen task. Let's learn about the GPT paper in this video. The first stage of training is unsupervised pre-training. Here you first tokenize the K past words in the sequence and the current token i. You then put them through the decoder part of the transformer. The outputs of the decoder are then passed through the LM head, which is nothing but the linear neural network layer. The outputs of the linear layer are then used to compute an unsupervised loss to predict the current token or the given word in the past k tokens. Given that this is unsupervised, you can use this approach to leverage vast amount of data like the Wikipedia pages. They use the book's corpus dataset. The next stage is the supervised training specific to the task on hand. The task can be anything as simple as classification or more complicated. For supervised fine tuning, you add another linear layer after the LM head and compute a supervised loss. Here you of course have the labels Y for your training data X. As a small trick, you not only optimize for this loss, but you also optimize for the sequence prediction and train the network for the combined loss. By doing this step, your GPT model is trained for a specific task. After training with the proposed approach we just saw, GPT evaluates the network for four tasks. Let's look at each of them. The first one is natural language inference, where the model predicts how two different sentences differ. So you have a premise and a hypothesis, and the model predicts whether it's a contradiction or entitlement or if it's just a, a neutrality. The second task is semantic similarity. It's about quantifying how similar or close in meaning the second sentence is to a given first sentence. These are just a few examples from the semantic textual similarity benchmark. If the score is 0, it means that the sentences are least similar. And if the score is 5, then it means that the sentences are very similar. The third task is classification. For classification, you can do a simple binary classification to say if the given sentence is grammatically correct or not. Or you can do a sentiment classification to say if the sentence is positive or neutral or somewhat in between. The last task is question answering, which is much more challenging even for humans. It's about paraphrasing a given passage so that the model can answer a question on that passage. Here, this is an example from the race dataset, which shows a passage and a multiple choice question based on the passage. These are just the datasets that are used in the paper to report results for all four tasks that we just saw. In total, they have used 12 datasets. When we do the fine tuning for a supervised task, we will have to separate the different parts of the task. For example, for the case of semantic similarity, we will have to input two sentences to ask the model how the two sentences are related. If we modify the model, all the hard work that we did for unsupervised pre-training will be gone. So GPT proposes 
to use a delimiter between the two inputs and then just put everything through the pre-trained model in sequence. These are just the results directly taken from the paper for all four tasks that we just saw. One thing that is clear is that we can see a leap in performance in some tasks compared to previous work and that also answers why GPT has become so famous recently. So we saw about GPT and clearly it works by unsupervised pre-training and supervised task specific training. But can we extend the unsupervised training to the task specific uh, training stage? Hmm. The answer lies in GPT-2. So while you like this video, subscribe and keep an eye for it. I will go and make GPT-2 video for you. Thank you very much and I will see you soon.